Hey everybody, Joy here. It's Tuesday, July 6, 2021. And we have just started the lounge gown party. I have probably half a dozen comments saying, I don't know how to do Instagram and I don't want to get Instagram and I don't know how to upload a picture to Instagram. <laughs> So I thought, well, I better tell everybody how you do that, just in case they don't know. Now, you know Instagram is a free app. You just search Instagram app, and it will come up on your cell phone. Your cell phone's the best place to have it. Your cell phone is super, super easy to send a picture to Instagram with. Very easy. So this whole video, number one, I have to have something to take a picture of. So I went and I found some fabric. And I'll tell you how I choose my fabric. You guys will laugh at me, but <laughs> you understand I'm going to be wearing this. Maybe with company in the house, maybe with my grandkids here, maybe with my sisters or whatever. But no matter who's here, I don't want to be too naked or too showy through -y. <laughs> And if it turns out that I am, then I actually would put, you know, a bra on underneath it. But what I do, <laughs> and y'all try this, it makes a big difference. I hold the fabric up the way it's going to hang. It's going to hang like this. And I put my knuckles in it. And I see how it's going to cling to my knuckles. Now my knuckles are representing the sticky outies on my body. Okay? Some fabrics really, really allow sticky outies to stick out. <laughs> Other fabrics mask it much better. I had one a minute ago I was going to use, and I went, oh my goodness, no, 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 you might as well just have spray paint on. So I picked this one up. This is a knit. I don't know where I got it now. This is a pretty nice one. I'd say it's about a medium weight, but nice for summer. It stretches that far, not a lot, which is one reason. The ones that are really, really slinky and really, really stretchy, they're the ones that really hug your, your sticky outy parts. Let's see how much it stretches this way. Not, hardly any at all that way. But it stretches enough this way to be a nice nightgown. So I found a pattern that I had made before. If you'll look back at my video yesterday, I'll put it under this video too, or I'll put it here or here, somewhere. <laughs> There's a video I made, and fortunately on my pattern, which is over there, I taped the fabric I always cut out a square of fabric, tape it to the envelope and the date that I made it. And underneath it, I put made blog such and such date. So I was able to go to my videos on YouTube and find the blog I made making this fit nice pattern. This fit nice pattern has a V-neck. This fit nice pattern has an FBA, but I'm actually going to leave the dart in it because this I made tops with. This has to be embellished, right? So, since it's a V, I thought, well, I told everyone that you probably should just have a boat neck or a round neck or a U neck to do an embroidery design or a scan and cut, but that isn't true. You can use a V neck, but you have to have like a border design that wraps around the corner. And supposedly it's supposed to always go on your left. So I found a design that I purchased a couple years ago from Embroidery Library. And it's just a little border, a little floral, one color only. Yay! One color only, so it's going to sew out quickly. So I opened it up in my software. I have the Artista Designer Plus software. So I printed it out in the actual size that it's going to make. And so then I arranged it. Always do this. Number one, you get your exact center. Number two, you get your exact size. So you can put it on your body. So I put it on my body and I decided I want to reverse it. I want to flip it upside down. I want to make it longer. So that's why I have the software. I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I'm not related or affiliated or anything with any embroidery company. <laughs> I love EMB Library. In fact, today if I was to buy something, they're all 50% off. They always have really good sales, kind of like Fabric Mark Fabrics does. 
So this is the design I'm going to use. I'm going to go over there to my computer. I'm going to make it longer. I'm going to flip it both directions and I'm going to get it ready to sew out. Then I'm going to cut this out. I don't know if I'm going to make it knee length or if I'm going to make a top and make shorts with it. But I'm going to cut it out. Remember I told you I cut it out bigger than it's going to be because embroidery sucks it up. Although this is a one color quick stitch design, it probably isn't going to suck it up very much. But you would not want to lose any of this width right here because you cut it out and then embroidered it. So I'm going to sort of cut it out, leave it like an inch bigger all the way around. And then I'm going to go sew my design on it. Then I'm going to sew it together after it gets an embellishment. Another thing I really like to do is I like to continue the design over the shoulder and around the back. So I might do that too. You never know what I'm going to do until I do it. So I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to get my design ready. I'm going to cut out the front. I'm going to hook up my embroidery machine. I'll come back when I have it hooked up and it's sewing out just so you can watch it sew because I just find that very intoxicating. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I figure out where to cut out the top before I put the embroidery on it, okay? I am going to put embroidery right here. You can see I printed it out that way and then I flipped it and I printed it out the other way in my software. Because one way wants to land on my apex, the other way will land away from it, okay? So this is the one you can see now. If I use this one, it's going to come down from my neck, curve around and land right here on my apex. <laughs> So I flipped it the other way, and now it's going to start at the shoulder instead of at the neck, and it's going to go toward center front. See, so this is the way it's going to sew now. Am I going to have it meet in the middle? No, I'm not. I am going to have it stop before the center because I don't want it on both sides. I only want it on one side and that's the left side. I could do it like this, and I might. I could do it like this and center it more in the shoulder. So you play with it on your paper pattern. And if I did that, then this right here would be the seam line in my garment. And then, and then that much right there would go around to my back shoulder. But I could sew that, and then I could get all that done, then I could take it out, and I could keep going. I could put it back in and sew some more on the back if I wanted to. But I'm not going to get that fancy because I'm kind of in a hurry because I want to teach you how to use Instagram today. <laughs> and I'm a bit behind. <laughs> so I think that will look nice. Then, of course, hold it up to you. Hold it up to you <laughs> and make sure. You like it on you and on the garment you're about to make. So I've decided, yes, that's what I want. I'm going to get rid of the wrong one so I don't put the wrong one on it. I have my pattern here. I'm not going to cut it out exactly. What I have done is I have marked with little iron heat removable friction marker dots. Did you catch all that? One of you said you tried to find these friction markers in my Amazon store and you couldn't find them. Well, it's no wonder. I don't like that Amazon store because sometimes it just shows a picture of a thing, but it doesn't say what it is. So if you go to my sewing essentials, my Amazon store is always in the description box below. Click on it. Click on the sewing essentials. Go down to the 10th row, the first item on the left is these markers. It doesn't say it's friction markers. <laughs> There's no writing at all. You can click on any of the items that you see. If you'll click on that little information box, there's a little box with some lines in it, click on it and I wrote something in there. And then you will see that those are the friction markers that I order and I love, okay? 
Put water on them, they go away. Put an iron on them, they go away. So I started to show you. I just did dot, dot to dot to dot to dot to dot to dot to dot around the top of this pattern because I am going to cut the pattern bigger. Let me show you. I'm going to cut it bigger the whole way around. I'm just going to loosely cut it because there you go. Now you can see how I cut that out and I know how I am about rotary blades. I'm such a tight wall. <laughs> I've got a hundred of them and I never want to change them. Oh, okay, does that show up pretty good? So when I take this, oh and another thing you want to mark, be sure, be sure, be sure, be sure you mark the center front or you will get that on there in a real funny way. Be sure you use friction markers or you're going to have to embroider something all over these yellow dots. I'm also going to mark the bus dart just to be sure I don't line that embroidery design up on my apex. That's too big a pin. Mark things. I love these friction markers because you can write on things. Okay, right there's my apex. That's not really my apex. That's a point of the dart, but it's close enough. My apex is an inch away from there. My apex is actually right here. So I could mark it too. In fact, I think I will. Let's just mark it on one side because you're only sewing this on one side. Okay, so that's my actual apex and I'm going to put a cross there. So that's my actual apex right there. This is the end of my dart. This is the front. This is the front right side of my garment. Okay, so there you go. And you can see I've only got that marked on one side, but that's the side I'm putting the design on. So that's the side that matters. If it was going on the other side too, I would mark around it as well. Because it's not going to do you a bit good to cut this out later and sew it up with your seam allowances and find out that you've got it over in the seam allowance area or you've got it up over the shoulder. It's another thing I'm going to do. I am going to take my dot to dot and I am going to mark the seam allowances which are a half inch. If I didn't put those dots there I wouldn't even know where to put this because I don't have it cut out right yet. Alright so that's the seam allowance there. This is the seam allowance here right there and this is the seam allowance over here. This is very, very important to do because once you just get this plain hunk of fabric over there and you don't have your pattern actually cut out, even if you did have it actually cut out, you could sure mess it up not knowing where your seam allowances are. Alright, so now I know where my seam allowances are. I know where my apex is. And so the next thing I'm going to do is draw the center point of my design on here. I have to know where the center of this the center of this design is so I can tell the embroidery machine. I'm going to put that little snowman there and I'm going to say this is where the center is and this is north, south, east, and west. And so I have got to mark that here. So here's the way it started out. Two flowers. Two flowers. That's what I paid for. This is what I am going to use. It now has four flowers and it's now, instead of shaped like an S, it's shaped like a C. So it is going to go around me. It's going to pass up my center and go up my shoulder and fit right into this pattern. I've made this pattern before so I know it fits me. I wouldn't even try this on something I had not made before. So see, it's going to go right there. Right there. 
Here's my dots that show where the pattern actually is. I wanted it to come past center front, and it does. It comes center, center here now, center on the shoulder, follows down, and jumps center front, and it's above my apex. So this is getting ready to be embroidered. Now, how do I tell the embroidery machine where on this piece of material do I want it to put this design? Where's north, south, east, and west? And where is center? The Solaris and the Elisimo. I don't think the Bernina has this. I had a Bernina to start with. I did not like that embroidery machine at all. <laughs> I actually got very upset with the company for bad service and went to a different company, and that's how I ended up with a, a baby lock to start with. They'd have been nicer to me over there at that other place. I'd probably uh, own theirs still. Okay, what I'm going to do is, there's your, your compass. See the cross and the arrow? The arrow points up, and then the cross is where you are going to center this. Now, it's not going to look like it's centered. What I do is I cut it. I cut through it. See here? So now it's cut. And now I can draw through that line. I'm going to mark this plus sign here, and I'll show it to you. I cut a hole in mine, and draw that there, and pop this side up, and draw that there. This is the snowman. I absolutely love this guy. Remember a few years ago it was I love, 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 now it's I absolutely love? Actually, I just really like this guy. <laughs> He's very helpful, I'm not gonna marry him for heaven's sakes. <laughs> So you take him and you put him exactly, exactly, exactly on this X. It's really a cross mark. All right, so now, no matter how I put this piece of material in the hoop, no matter if it's upside down, right side up, sideways, long ways, whatever, I know the top of his head is up and the bottom of his belly is down and crossways is through the middle of his belly. So when I take my design, that little snowman is going to mark this arrow right there. This is what he's marking. And the embroidery machine will know, okay, this is where we're supposed to put this design because this is where the cross is. How cool is that? Over here is my desktop computer with my Bernina Embroidery Software Designer Plus software. There's my design. I put the design on this flash drive. I'm over here on my Solaris Embroidery Machine. I asked it to get the design off that flash drive, and there it is. Then I told it to find the snowman, and it did. So look at this snowman on here. You can see, this is, you can see the hoop, straight and straight. <laughs> straight horizontal, straight diagonal. Look at the snowman compared to the hoop. I hope this is showing it. He's totally, completely cockeyed. Well, he doesn't have any eyes, but see how he is? Totally sideways. But this has a camera in it, and the camera found that snowman, and the camera turned the design so it will sew the proper direction. Is that amazing, or is it amazing? <laughs> I've got to go find some thread, Fred. That is a pretty color of thread by Floriani. I bought Floriani thread, and I've been given Floriani thread as a gift, but I've never used it. I don't know how it compares to Isocorn, which is what I usually use and love. I love Isocorn. It never gives me any problems. I've got a pre-wound bobbin in the bobbin case, and you can see it's sewing 
Even though it's got that crazy, crazy crosswalk <laughs> going sideways and everywhere crazy. I don't know how it does it, but I just think it's amazing. So I hope this is pretty. I don't know if there's such a thing as brown flowers, but that's what we're going to have in this case. <laughs> I'm going to use a variegated, but I couldn't find one that I really thought would be pretty. So, I'll show it to you in a little while. But that's my Solaris. Becky's is exactly like it, but hers is the brother version called a Luminaire. And over here, I think I showed you the other day, I have my Elisimo. I may decide to sell my Elisimo. I don't know. I, I'm so attached to these machines. <laughs> They're like my babies. <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> 38 minutes later, and it's all sewn. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? And now you can see my orange dots where the neck is going to be. Here's going to be the neck. This is the seam allowance. And you can see because I drew these dots on here, I did not get it too far over into the shoulder or too far over into the neck or too far up into the shoulder seam. So I'm liking that. Let's get it put together. So you've got your lounge gown all done. You got your embroidery done. You've got it all sewn together. So this again is the Fit Nice system master top pattern that I have put an FBA in and I have actually sewn a dart in this. This could be a dress. It's not going to be a dress, <laughs> but it could be. I mean, you could use the pattern to make a dress, you understand? And um, I love the embroidery. I think it turned out really pretty, but I have had my clothes off on, off on, off on, off on. My eyebrows are completely torn. <laughs> If my shirt's got brown pencil on it, it's from my eyebrows. <laughs> so I decided to let Lucy model it. So what this video is all about is to teach you how to do Instagram. Everybody has a cell phone. Instagram is free. Just go out to your app store on your phone and search for Instagram. It's free download it. You can have Instagram just for this week, just for this contest. Just long enough to get your picture over there for me to look at. And then when the contest is over, you can just unsubscribe. Just delete it. Do away with Instagram. Right there. Do you see that there, Instagram? That's the icon for it. You want to get that on your phone at least until you're done with this contest. We're going to choose our camera. We're going to choose photo, not portrait, not video. Now this is how I do it. This is how you can go, she's doing it totally wrong. I probably am. So if somebody knows a better way, hey, feel free to tell me, okay? We're going to click on this arrow up here. This is an iPhone 11. And then we're going to get these little numbers down here. Now, I don't know why, but for some reason, this button here lets you choose a square. Okay? So, I'm going to choose a square. Square. So, evidently, one-to-one -one means square. Now, my last camera, you just chose square, and it was a square. <laughs> so. Now, there is our picture right there. we got to take a picture of that lounge gown now. So I am going to take a picture of it. Make sure there's light on it. Make sure, if you're standing in front of a window, that the light from the window is facing on what you're getting ready to take a picture of. Turn on a lamp, have it shine. Uh, I have a pole lamp and I just aim the lamps at what I'm fixing to take a picture of. Um, you can use one of these things. See, one of these zeros. I've got that shining on her right now. I'm going to take a picture of my lounge gown, and it is a square. Look around your picture. Make sure there's nothing you don't want to show in it, like I often have a bra hanging on the doorknob. There's just no telling what you're liable to find. A minute ago, I had something hanging off the side of that file cabinet. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're going to take a picture. There. I'm going to try to show you with my cell phone how easy it is to send a picture to Instagram. If you have, I hope this will stay still here. I tried to make it so I can use it without it wobbling all over the place. Right here, you can see the little Instagram app icon right there. That's what it looks like when you go to search for it. I think I probably already showed you that in this video. So we're not going to click on that right now. We're going to go find our picture and we're going to send it there. So we're going to go to our photos, photos. We're going to pick a photo. So here's the picture of the gown that I just finished. So we're going to choose it. It's a square. You know how to make it a square. I showed you how to make it a square. If you don't make it a square, again, it is going to cut off. It's going to cut off your head. In that case, it would cut off my embroidery design. Instagram requires a square photo. I don't know why. I'm just telling you the way it is, my friends. So now here's the easiness of it. Do you see this little box right down here? It's a square with the up arrow in it. I hope the camera is seeing it well. I know my patterns didn't show good at all the other day. <laughs> It was not taken well at all. <laughs> so hopefully you can see this little box with the up arrow in it. I've got my picture. Have you all noticed that this gown is completely see-through? No way am I ever wearing that as a nightgown. <laughs> I started to remove the picture from Instagram because that one does not count. If that gets worn, it's going to be as a dress with underwear <laughs> with a bra and a slip underneath it. Okay, so we're going to click on this little box with the arrow in it. Now look there. All of those little pictures popped up. And look at down here on this row. This row shows you that you can send that picture. We've already given it the send command. When you click on that little box that has the up arrow, that's the send command. Now it wants to know where do you want it to go. You can airdrop it, which I think is to the cloud. You can text message it, you can email it, you can put it on Facebook Messenger, or look what's next. Oh, what a surprise! The Instagram icon. How easy is this? This is why you need the app on your phone. Because if it's on your phone, then your photos can go there. Because it's got the app. You push on that. And then this pops up. Now, I just got an update to my phone a couple days ago. This did not used to come up on my Instagram. I just, the other day, saw this for the first time. And you can make three choices. This is all to Instagram. You can post the picture. You can do something about a story. I have no idea what. I'll have to do a, uh, a test and see what that does. Or you can do a message. Maybe if you click on message, you can type words around it. But we just want to post the picture. That's all we want to do. So we're going to put post. Then this is going to come up. So you see we're at Instagram. Right there it says Instagram. And right here it says write a caption. And right here is the picture of that lounge gown with the embroidery on it. We can share it, which means it will put the picture in our Instagram photo album. That's what share does. It puts that picture in your album, but it won't put it anywhere else. We want to put it under the hashtag Joy Lounge Gown. You also can write other stuff in there. You can put hashtag Joy Lounge Gown, you can put Fly Me to the Moon, you can say I did it my way, you can say this is this, this is that. But as long as you put that hashtag, it will go to that hashtag division, department, location, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> our pajama party, and that picture will show up there, okay? So under write a caption, I am going to type hashtag J-O 
Y L O U U N G E G O W N N Hashtag Joy Lounge Gown. Now the share word has changed to OK. Now it says OK. So when I click that OK, this is going to go to my Instagram photos, my personal photos that I can make private or public. Be sure yours are public or they won't go anywhere else except your personal Instagram photo album. Okay? But when I send this, it's going to go to my personal album and it's going to go to the hashtag Joy Lounge Gown. Let's click OK. Okay, so now it's saying, okay, we've got hashtag Joy Lounge Gown. Do you want to share it now? Yes. I pushed share and it says, success! <laughs> and there it is. There's the picture. I cannot believe how sheer that fabric is. Oh my goodness, it's embarrassing. That's why it's on Lucy and not me. <laughs> so, you're done. There's nothing else to do. You're back in your original picture and back to your home screen. Okay? So now, let's go to Instagram and let's see if that picture's there. And of course, it'd probably be there twice now. So here, this all changed for me too. And I thought if I clicked up here on my face that it would go to my place, but it doesn't. It goes someplace else and confuses me. And so I'm going to click down here on this little head and shoulders in a zero. And there's my page. I don't know who those people are, but there's my picture. What you do to find hashtag Joy Lounge Gown Ish and uh, Viv's sweet son Colin taught me this. I'll tell you what little I know about Instagram, he taught me. Go to the magnifying glass. Right there. I've typed it in so many times. But you would type it in up there. If it wasn't already typed there, you would type it there. And then you click on Joy Lounge Gown. And there it is. <gasps> look at somebody put Joy on there. So there's a bunch of pictures here, you guys, and they are so fun. You want to look at some of them? <laughs> look at that. Isn't that fun? Let me see what it says. But joy comes with the morning. It's a scripture. I love it. I love it. There's two scriptures I'm wanting to do for mine. Let's just look at some of them. But joy comes with the morning. And remember, you can put as many pictures as you want. Okay, so you want to go back to... It's stuck on her picture. How do I go back to Maine? Let me try that. Okay, maybe if we go this way. Yeah, that's the one I put up this morning. That's Beth. Hi! I put you up there. There you are. <laughs> Yay! Now here's one, and this looks like shorts and a top, but I can't really tell what it looks like. Ooh, now that is just pretty. <gasps> She's got some lace. I think that might be a garment under a garment. Lounge gown. That is beautiful. I wonder where she got that pretty design. And this little lady put a real cute embroidery crown on hers. See? Very fun. And this is my friend Jane Gilson. And I just love the time and attention she took to take these photographs. She's getting ready to go to bed. Her top is way fun. It says hit the hay and there's a bird in the hay. <laughs> I love it. And there she is getting in her bed. I just think that's marvelous. I just love it when you guys show me your homes. Look here. She also put that embroidery on there. I have to tell you, so far, friends, that is my favorite. Let's see what else we got. I haven't seen them all, though. This one is a long one all the way to the floor. Oh, there's a new one. His. It's another scripture. Oh, I love that. His mercies are new every morning. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to have to copy that one. I love it. This one has Joy Lounge Gown on it. It's really cute. Look, hashtag Joy Lounge Gown in a heart, and it's also color blocked. That's another one of my favorites. I really like that one. And let's see. This lady put, 
I don't know if that's embroidery. If you read the information that's with the photos, you can probably find out more information. And my mouth is right over this camera. I hope I'm not screaming at you. Turn me down, turn me down. She's got embroidery or scan and cut or something on the front of this print. That one's a pretty one. And this lady has roses. She knows I love roses. That's an embroidery library. And that's mine, that doesn't count. And this is a cute Mickey Minnie, and I love her uh, gown. Hold still. Can you see the Mickey Minnie? I love her hair. <laughs> Us that don't have much hair, we always love those of you who do. Viv just cut her long, long hair off. <laughs> I wish I could have picked it up off the floor and glued it to my head. Look, I love the slits, and I love that it's sleeveless. I've got to do one of those. And there's me, and I don't count, and I don't count, and I don't count, and I don't count. Is that all there are? Oh my goodness, well nobody wants to see me. So that's how many so far, but this is Friday, and you have all day tomorrow and all day Sunday to put pictures of yours up. Okay, so do you know how to do your pictures now, my friends? Do you know how? <laughs> well, I got to the end of these clips here and notice that I never did say goodbye so <laughs> this video is over right here <laughs>